This yes, is our good friend Jacoby Criswell, who plays quarterback. <laughs> yes, with sir. us for a couple of years and then went somewhere. Indeed. Came back. Indeed. So, We're sure. thrilled to have him. So go ahead, fire sure, away with Jacoby. I'm sure you've been asked by a ton of people, but why I come back here, it doesn't happen very often, but we're in a unique era now, so we'll probably see it more often. Right, I mean, as a guy, as a young man, you never know what's gonna happen. You follow God's path, decided to leave, and thought that was the best decision for me. Things came in hand to where, obviously, I had no control over. So, entered the transfer portal. Luckily enough, Coach Brown and all the guys were on board having me back. It was a done deal, I mean, just playing along the guys that I came in with, younger guys, knowing the team that is here right now and the culture that they build. I mean, you can't pass up on that. I mean, being coached by Coach Brown, you got Coach Lindsey here, you got all this, all these new guys here, and it's like I come back here and it's still the same, and it's like this is home. I thought home was leaving going somewhere else, but in reality, this is home. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to end my college football career. And so it was a done deal for me. What was that? Last season didn't go exactly the way I'm sure that you wanted to. Was there a point during the year where you knew that you were going to make a decision to move on and find something else? Or when did that occur to you that you had to do that? Uh, I'd probably say midway through the spring. I mean, you get told one thing, you get told another. I mean, some things aren't true, some things are. But at the end of the day, new OC, didn't really know him. I mean, he came in with a guy he knew already, and I had to build that relationship. But, I mean just didn't go my way so there was nothing I could do about it I mean besides wake up in the morning practice my tail off do what I have to do I mean regardless of what they decided I'm a type of guy I'm just going to go out there and perform the way I perform and if things don't go my way it doesn't go my way and so I got two years left of this thing so it's do or die at this point what was Max, what was Max message to you his pitch for you to come back I mean compete I mean as a quarterback I mean nothing's handed to you I mean, I'm a guy, I'm a competitor. I mean, I love to compete. I mean, been here for three years, competed with two great quarterbacks. I mean, you can't take that, I can't take that back. Like, I'm really blessed with that opportunity and I'm just here to compete. Were you well, the this? first contact, you or Carol Lovett, who did it happen? Uh, me and a couple guys were talking here and there, but that was about it. Was it a bit surprising to see them pop up in your inbox? No, uh, yeah, somewhat, I mean, it happened, and so I can't really say much about it. I mean, I'm very blessed about it because you hardly ever see it. And so I got that opportunity, either if I made the call, they made the call, if one of the guys made the call. I mean, I'm glad it came out to be this way, and I'm happy to be here. Have you heard from any of your old teammates from your first stint here, Dre, Josh, any of those guys since you came back? Oh, yeah. I uh, actually... Before I even committed here, I was down here, got to meet up with all those guys, kind of told, told them what was going through my head, and they all wanted me back. And so, I mean, me and Drake, we talked a couple times ever since he got drafted. Uh, me and Sam, we talked a couple times. JJ, big JJ guy, Caleb guy, big O, uh, John Copenhaver. And so, I mean, they were all on board. And so it's all about whenever a guy leaves and then he comes back, it's like you got to – not necessarily win them over, but it's like, okay, like, what's the reason? What's behind it? And it's like, not too many people are accepted of another guy leaving and coming back, which I'm very blessed with. And so that happened. And so I'm here working my tail off, competing, doing whatever I have to do. What was your advice to you, uh, Drake and Sam, when you've talked to them since Drake's been drafted? I mean, just a whole, whole lot of ball talk, you know? I mean, he told me he's very grateful that I was here, that I was able to push him throughout practice every single day, never let him let up, which was my goal. I mean, he got the job. My goal was, as an older guy, like, okay, and he as a younger guy, it's like, I've seen what Sam did. And so it's like, Sam never slacked. So it's like, every day of practice, I want to win. As a backup quarterback, it's like, you don't, you want to win. Like, you don't want to be on the sideline losing. And so it's like, okay, I'm going to push you every single day. And that was my job. And I did exactly that. And look where he went now. It's like, very grateful for the opportunity. And Sam, Sam's just down to earth guy. I mean, we just talk. I mean, he just asks me like how I'm doing this and that, ask him how he's doing. Went to go visit him, I think back in January when he played at the Rams. Didn't get to see him. The, ga the game didn't go too well, but I mean, it's just conversations like that. This is what Carolina brings you relationships. So then finish, so finish the sentence, quick follow-up, sorry. Quick finish the sentence for me. You got NFL quarterback Sam Howe, NFL quarterback Drake May, NFL quarterback, do you believe in yourself to get to that level? I wouldn't be here if I didn't.
Jacoby, I hear you on the competing, but like at this point, after having been a backup mm. so many years, I mean, it's, it, is the main goal just to start? I mean, of course. I mean, you don't play this sport to sit the bench. I mean, as a guy, as I, I, I hold a lot of weight to myself. I mean, I've been back and forth with great quarterbacks, and I know my right arm is one of the best in the country, 100%. I mean, this is the moneymaker. And so it's like one of those things where, like, I'm not going to let it go go to waste. I got, to, like I said, I got two years left, and so at this point, it's do or die. You've last always time. said that about the arm, you know. Yeah, last mm-hmm. time we talked to you, you were, you were talking about throwing 75 yards. <laughs> oh yeah. After I'm, the spring game, a couple of years. Oh yeah. I mean, this is it right here. I don't think I'd be where I am without it. Kind of a broad until. question here, but across the board, in addition to playing, what's the mission here for you? What's the personal mission? I mean, you have Sam Howe, Drake May. I told Drake May a while back. I said you beat me out, but. Eventually, I want to win an ACC championship, something you, you didn't do. And so it's just one of those things. So, uh, how has it kind of been, you know, reacclimating yourself, I guess, if you will? Um, obviously, you know, coming in in the summer, you have camp coming up. How has it been kind of, you know, getting, you know, reused to everything mm-hmm. and, and gearing up for uh, that camp period? Uh, well, obviously, I came. They quarterbacks practice in the spring. I came in the summer. I mean, now it's just all about getting the playbook. I mean, Offense is similar. I wouldn't say too similar. There's some tweaks here and there. I mean, but at the end of the day, just diving into the playbook, getting on Coach Lindsey's good side, learning how he wants things done, and just grinding it out when the ball comes. I mean, I'm prepared. I'm ready to play. You know, we kind of, you kind of touched on, obviously, you know, being part of, you know, quarterback, you know, battles before and, you know, the main objective being to compete, pushing the other guy, things like that. Uh, I guess kind of, you know, in addition to that, what were some of the, you know, main things you kind of, you know, took away or even learned about yourself, you know, having been a part of, you know, quarterback competition in the past? Uh, I mean, you can learn a lot of things from those two quarterbacks. I mean, Sam, for an instance, very humble guy, not so vocal, and learn from him. I could be a little bit more vocal. From Sam, from, from Drake, I mean, super competitive guy. And, I mean, there's, I would say there's probably some days where it's like, okay, I know what I, I bring to the table. But Drake was more vocal, and he'll give you the look, and he's like, okay, we're going to business. So it's like, okay, let me put my helmet on. Let's strap it up. And so it's just one of those things, just being more competitive each and every day. And so it's just bringing those to the tables. And with Drake, Drake was just mentally smart. Like, he knew where to go. So it's just being in that same film room with him, getting his knowledge, bringing it to mine, and just stacking those things up. Are you worried about living up to fans' expectations after now they've had Sam Howell, now they've had Drake May? Oh, no, it's my expectation. I mean, my expectation is to be the best I can be. Regardless of what Sam and Drake did, I mean, I'm my own guy. I'm not Drake May. I'm not Sam Hell. I'm Jacoby Criswell. I have my own story. And so my story, I want to write it myself. And may not go as planned, but probably be close. So how important is that How important is that relationship between you and JJ then? Because obviously Drake had Josh and Antoine. Mm-hmm. JJ is kind of the de facto leader of that wide receiver mm-hmm. group now. Oh, no, we're super close. We hung out a couple two weeks ago, I believe, just hanging it out, just being boys and I mean, it's just one of those things. I mean, as you get older, you kind of understand, like, okay, this whole business isn't about yourself. This whole business is about every, every other guy in that building right there, including the coaches. I mean, their job's on the line. Here, now it's with the transfer portal. It's like, okay, our job is on the line. So it's now it's like, okay, let me get my aspect out of the way. Let me get the things I want done out of the way. This is about the, t- about the team. So that's what is really important to me. What's the biggest thing you changed? learned in your time away from Chapel Hill? Um... That's a great question. Uh, I'd probably say just how much brotherhood meant to me. I mean, coming in with all these guys and just being close with all these guys and understanding these guys, you go somewhere else and transfer, you have to start a new life over. And so it's like being here, all these great people, including people outside of football, got people that I met that are just working, doing things that they love. It's like, you can't get that same love anywhere else. I mean, especially as a new guy, and it's like, I built those relationships. I want to build on those relationships. The QB room has changed a lot since mm-hmm. you left. What's your assessment of your competition? There? I mean, great, great men. Connor, I was here whenever he was here. I mean, learned from him, he learned from me. Max, saw him, we played against him in Texas when he was at Texas a and Great guy, I mean, just, but regardless of the decision of what Coach Lindsey wants or what Coach Lindsey does, I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to be in that QB room the whole year. So it's like, no matter what, you don't have any bad words towards each other whatsoever. I mean, great quarterbacks. I mean, this is 
by far, I'd say top three QBU. So everybody can play. But at the end of the day, it's like you can't be mad if it's not you, you know? So it's just more about, like, just being being that brother for him, you know? You went a while without seeing Connor. What, was, what struck you when you came back and saw him? Maybe how he changed his <laughs> spring year and a half ago. He's a little bit a little bit more stronger than he was back then. He was freshman freshman kid coming in, little little scrawny guy. But now it's like he's learning he's learning the whole aspect of college football. Especially when it comes to playing it. He kinda he understands it a lot more to where freshman year he'll come in with a bunch of questions. Super smart guy. And his questions would be off the top. I'd be like honestly I didn't think about that. But now it's like okay, he understands the ins and outs of everything to where like, okay, I'm glad you don't have to ask me a question anymore. When you said earlier, offenses were similar, did you, do you mean Longo's offense and Chip Lindsey's offense or the one from Arkansas that you were coming from back? I mean, both. Okay. I mean, here you get bits and pieces of Coach Longo's offense. I mean, besides terminology wise, I mean, that's different everywhere. And at Arkansas, similar plays, different terminology. I mean, back to who asked me the question about like, fall ball and all that. I mean, it's just more about picking up the terminology. Like, I'm pretty much used to the offense. I mean, there's some ins and outs of it, but at the end of the day, still the same. I was going to say, to, to follow up on that, I mean, are you trying to fast track anything in terms of what you're learning since you didn't have the spring, you know, since you've been gone? Like, is that, is it, is there sort of an urgency, more of an urgency to, I mean, yeah, to well, what's happening right now? 100%. You go to a new school, you have to learn their whole playbook. And so, but at the same time, it's like, I've done this before. I've been in, had three different head coach, three different OCs. So it's like one of those deals to where like, I know, like I know what's in the playbook. It's more about like, what do you want me to do with it? What's in the playbook? But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm a football player. You adapt and you adjust, so. Go you get, um, may not, that doesn't have to be football, but can you remember a moment you were down there and there was something about Chapel Hill that you missed? came into your mind, not that that was disappointing, but just something that you missed up here. Can you remember a moment like that when, when it happened? Mm, I can technically know. I mean, if I could just go off the top of my head and think of something, I will just say just how close everybody is here. I mean, that's really that's really what it's about. I mean, I've been, been with two or three great teams when I was here. And so it's just like one of those things you go somewhere else, have a bad year, and then it's like, okay, what's, why did that happen? And you start to reflect on the times where you did have a good season. And there was bits and pieces there, but at the end of the day, I'll just say brotherhood. Do you remember downtown uh, uh, on the student bike, just the time that you had and it dawned on you, wow, I missed that, you know? Uh, I mean, it's just John Copenhaver, Landon Stevens, he doesn't play anymore. Kobe Doreen, he doesn't play, play anymore, but those were my roommates, and it's just like, just, Friday, Saturday nights, just hanging out in the room, just playing video games, just hanging out, and just like getting football off our minds. And it's just like one of those things to where you can't really get that if you go somewhere else because you're constantly in a playbook having to learn. And so you really don't have a time off. But as if I was here, I had time to get in the playbook, understand it. And it was like, okay, I kind of can relax a little bit. And me leaving, there was really no relax in my, day, my daily life. Do you take? Do you? I mean, I take you're excited to play college football 25. Um, assuming you are, is that a yes? Mm -hmm. Who's the first team you're gonna try and beat down? What's funny is, okay, so I went to Arkansas. They're red, right? It took me probably three months just to put something red on. <laughs> so I had to say NC State. But yeah, that's a funny story. I actually came here when I first saw Coach Brown. I was like, Coach, I mean, the way you hammer about the red. It really took a toll on me when I left. It took me three months. I was like, I'm not used to this. And so I still barely had any red in my uh, in my wardrobe. But, I mean, just a funny story. I'm sure this might be a stupid question, but do you think if, if it's even possible to play with a similar kind of playbook that you can use at UNC on the video game, do you think that's something that could maybe help you like learn? I was actually talking to one of the guys in the locker room about it. I was like, I don't think that's going to happen. If that happens, a lot of coaches will be playing it. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't think so. Just take me through, if you don't mind, the first time you're back here in Chapel Hill after you know officially transferring back. Mm -hmm. Where are you? What's going through your mind like first day back? I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a rush. It's a great feeling, though. You know, I mean, coming back to something you're used to. I mean, that was 
the main reason why I came back, I'm used to this place. And it was like, I didn't want to have to restart my whole life knowing I have two years left because it's so hard to get back on track going to a new team. I mean, obviously this is a new team, but I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar with a lot of the guys, familiar with the coaches. And so it's just like, okay, they're familiar with me. All I have to do is just adjust and play the way I play. But at the end of the day, I just, it was more, I just came here and it was like, it was like I was relieved. It was like, there's no pressure. To me, I feel like there's no pressure here whatsoever. I mean, I know what I'm capable of. The coaches know what I'm capable of. The players know what I'm capable of. So now it's just doing what I do and play ball. That first day when it was formal that you're back here, were mm -hmm. they nerves? Were they nerves at all? No, I, I kind of figure like some people kind of pick apart on what goes on, why I came back. But at the end of the day, it's my word against yours. And I mean, you can go with whatever you want to say, but you don't know the ins and out of it. What, what were things that people said that bothered you the most? Uh, that's one comment that I've seen. So I'm not a big, I, I don't go into social media just looking up things whatsoever. My mom's the big, big person with that. And I'm like, mom, all right, you got to stop sending me this stuff. I don't, <laughs> really care. I don't care what people say. You know that. She was like, yeah, but it bugs me. You're my boy. I was like, I get that. But uh, it's just one of those things to where, like, they say what happened at Arkansas, which wasn't true whatsoever. And I'm not going to get into that. But, I mean, it's just weird things like that. And it's like things where people just obviously think they know what they're doing just because they want other people to comment on it. But at the end of the day, I mean, you can go for the clicks and likes, but we know the truth. Has Mac Brown, Brown changed at all since uh, you were here and since you've come back? Oh, no. Same guy as before. He's... When I first when I first got here, it's always joking, silly. I mean, that's just the type of coach you want to play for. I mean, a guy that's just himself, and you can just be yourself. I mean, besides, obviously, football-wise, like, he's going to be there, talk to you about, like, if you're doing good, if you're doing bad, kind of critique you, critique you on things and try to help you out. But, I mean, besides that, I mean, that's just the coach that, like, in this building, you know you can go to any time. But maybe he's got some new dance for himself for the locker room. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Who else did you hear from when the word got out that you were transferring? Surely uh, other people contacted you. Oh, yeah, I've heard from a pretty good amount of schools. I mean, it, a bunch of FCS schools, uh, a lot of schools. I've heard from South Carolina, uh, Arizona State. heard from uh, Mississippi State here and there. Um, Oklahoma State, Northwestern, that was actually my second. Uh, but, I mean, there's some schools here and there, but really as soon as me and North Carolina had in contact, it was a done deal from there. Right. So you get your, no, it's fine. You get your, same jersey, uh, get your same jersey number back to Cole because Nate has that number six. So. Oh, I'm going number 12. Number 12 officially. What did, they, number. What, what did they tell you about your chances to start? I mean... But they like to say, like, two quarterbacks, they don't have one, now it's three. You can say you don't have one. I mean, it's an interesting kind of dynamic, three quarterbacks fighting for one spot. You don't see that often. I mean, yeah, you don't see it often, but at the end of the day, you have to compete. And with that being said, I mean, I mean, it's just one of those things where, like, you want to compete, you can come here. If you don't, don't come here. But it's just one – it's just obviously me coming here knowing they had the spring over me and I just have summer and the fall – I mean, I'm a competitor. I, I'm a type of guy like you can have so many days over me, but I know what I'm capable of. And that's just kind of how I carry myself. Could, Could you, you really throw it further than Sam? Or was that something you 100% true. 100% <laughs> true. He had a big arm. 100% I've got the video true. evidence to prove it on that laptop. 100% true. That's what you showed here. Yep, yep. Oh, that's right. Was it from the spring? Yep, yeah. yep. All right. So I agree. Obviously, you, you know, having been part of the you know, SEC you know, for a year, uh, what were some of the, I guess, main differences, I guess, from that level, you know, to the ACC? Like, was there anything that really stuck out to you about, you know, being in the, in the ACC? See, that's a funny question because I just don't think there's a big difference. I mean, there's a difference between here and there in the ACC, you have D-lines, like for here, for an instance, D-lines that are just really, really good, faster off the ball, quick off the ball, and et cetera. And that's probably the main difference from SEC and ACC. I mean, DB-wise... I mean, as a quarterback, I just think all defenses are terrible, honestly. Like, I, I, that's just my mindset with it all. But, I mean, from skill-wise, I mean, you just kind of can see those when watching the tape. It's, like, it's very similar, except for SEC probably gets more hype than the ACC. 
But at the end of the day, I mean, it's just football. The year, the last year you were here, Omarion was a true freshman. He got to a certain point where mm-hmm. he didn't even play like mm-hmm. the second half of the year. Now the guy's an All-American and obviously a freaking stud. Mm-hmm. Like, like what, what are the changes you've seen from him since you got back here as opposed to the guy you, you saw when you were leaving? That's funny. So whenever, because we're on a white team together, and that's the second group, and Big O, he would always put his head down. Right. Always put his head down, tumble, do whatever he does. Now it's like you see it, and it's like, okay, like you've seen the skill-wise whenever he was running the ball, like what he could be. But seeing him do it now, it's like, as for me, being an older guy, seeing that whenever I was younger and he was younger and seeing it, and it's like, wow. And that's what Carolina football does to you. It helps you grow. It helps you grow as a person. It helps you grow as a football player. And so that's why I'm back. Yeah, the jump has been pretty tremendous with him, oh, right? Mm-hmm. I just want to clarify something from earlier. Did, did UNC reach out to you first in the portal, or was it you to them? Uh, just me and my relationship with the football guys there. So you first, basically, like, hey, I'm, I want, I'm interested in coming back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go back to uh, uh, this will be an after to great show. answer. <laughs> you raced, you raced with, with Drake. There was a lot of comment about was it close, was it not close. Mac Brown said it went right down to the end. Mm-hmm. Tell us about exactly how that went. Uh, it was super close. Spring game came down to a coin flip on who was going to start or not. I mean, a couple weeks later, they named him yet. I mean, obviously, I believe it was super close. I mean, just because, like, I know the type of work I put in, the work he put in, and it was just a constant battle every single day. I don't think it would have been a constant battle. I don't think if it was one of those things where, like, obviously he had the upper hand through, like, the first half, then obviously I could feel that I, I wouldn't know personally but them telling me me having my meeting whenever they named them it was like I understand like no hard feelings with it whatsoever like it's just whoever like regardless of who was going to play I had faith in both of us that we were going to win a lot of games and that's the most important when it comes to football like a lot of people say it's about having fun no it's not about having fun it's about winning football games so let's put the guy out there that's going to win the football games so yeah thank you all right thank you thanks well